10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Happy Halloween to you all. And I thought as a special treat, I'd do an extended vlog giving you an over the shoulder view of my work on what I think has been regarded by the press to be one of the biggest TV events of the year. Inside number nine is a season I've been working on for a few years now. In season five, this is episode 25. It is the brainchild of polymaths Rhys Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton, who not only write the episodes, they also perform in them. They're scholars of horror as well as being comedians and fantastic actors. So they're an amazing mixture of incredibly dark humour, uh, pathos, and seriously scary horror. What also makes the series unique is every episode is completely different. Imagine Twilight Zone of old or Tales of the Unexpected. So one week, and this is where the challenge is for me as a composer, I'll be writing for like medieval Witchfinder General type stuff. The following week, I'll be composing for a call center in Runcorn. And this episode is no exception because we're doing it live. They're gonna perform it, it's gonna be filmed and broadcast live and I am not only scoring it live I'm performing it live solo. They didn't want to just do a live show for the sake of doing a live show aren't we clever. They wanted to give it a purpose. They wanted to make it so that if you didn't see it live you weren't going to appreciate the full kind of experience of it. So what they did, spoiler alert, is it starts on a standard kind of multi-camera shoot and then about five minutes into the first episode everything starts going wrong, at which point the audience are sucked into their pathology. So for me as a composer, I have to write two scores, well, create two sound worlds, the world of the filmed show and then the world of their pathology. Unlike my usual vlogs, this may have a slightly more video diary feel to it. This is because I'm concentrating on the matter in hand and the technological challenge of that. So apologies for a slight dip in quality, but I hope you find the content that much more enriching. We'll also be going into the shed, reflecting on how my system evolved over the few days of rehearsal, why I decided to use Logic Pro, even though I wasn't using it as a sequencer, and why old trusty EXC was at the center of this whole thing. So you join me at the beginning of the process. I went to have a meeting with Babs, the director, the producer, the series producer, Adam Tandy, and uh, Reese Shearsmith is one half of the two guys who write and tend to appear in Inside Number Nine. And what we did is something called a script spot. Usually at the beginning of these processes, you kind of look at a rough cut or an assembly and you spot to that, work out where we need music. But um, because there's never gonna be any picture for me to work to, um, we've done it to the script. So what I'm gonna do is I've made notes of basically this quite a lot of source cues, music running through here, music running through this bits of dialogue. What I'm first gonna do is create a um, spotting sheet so that we're kind of all on the same page, that we don't, I guess, at this stage, what you want to do is over-deliver. Under-delivery is, is an absolute nightmare where you don't have something for a moment. Um, but also, there's going to be clear jobs between the sound department and me. They'll be using something called a grams op, which is an old-fashioned word for a gramophone operator, to fire sounds in, atmospheres, but also possibly some source cues along with some pre-recorded material. So just broken the back of uh, the Halloween episode, written my first couple of cues. The first being, this stuff actually, it's interesting, would usually be the last stuff to go in, the little kind of itsy bitsy source bits, but they have to uh, do voiceovers, they need to do kind of um, create these kind of fake radio things that are in the background. So this is the second radio cue that I've had to do, which is the classic radio jingle, which is basically, it's meant to be classic FM, but I think it's called symphonic FM or something like that. So. Career defining. Uh, so harp and a bit of Olafur's waves, uh, which is very nice. And then just got to write the first bit of radio music, which is a cheesy kind of making a will ad. So I'm going to do that now, switching you off for now. <laughs> So it's uh, early in the morning, 
on Thursday. Basically, um, there's about a week and three days to go. So today's the first day of like kind of creating, um, I, don't know, I guess, physical assets. So I've got a cello session going on in London, a sample session with a guy called Ren, who's an awesome cellist. So I need to go and do some kind of cello parts for that. It's basically going to be some single notes and then some patterns. Uh, I've decided upon the rig I'm going to use, which is going to be laptop, so a MacBook Pro. Um, I'm not going to use an audio interface, I'm just going to cut out any possible areas for error. So I'm just going to use the headphone out of that. I need to get a mixing desk because I need a fail-safe system. So I need basically a keyboard with a MIDI splitter going into this and then out into the mixer, but then I need a fail-safe of that. So this is the most expensive part of the kind of production for me personally, is um, another one of these. Um, so it can simply be two SSDs, one in this one, one in this one, headphone out into a mixer. If one of them freezes, I simply cross-mute on the uh, mixer. And then that, that'll give just basically stereo out for the sound department. So first thing I want to do today, because I think it takes quite a long time, is basically um, uh, make a clone of this, this machine. So that's what I'm going to do this morning, then cello parts. Uh, I'm travelling to Amsterdam today, uh, so we'll use that time to prepare the cue sheet. So it's a very civilised uh, sample chopping station here. So got the files back from Air Adele. Absolutely amazing. Got 30 basically different styles, but some of these are actually kind of dynamic layers. So I guess I'll probably get about 20 different instruments. Here we are. So just about to um, make them all chopped up. And I think that they're gonna sync to some kind of tempo. Um, so I probably will just use strip silence and see how far I get with that. I used to absolutely dread starting jobs but ever since I developed this kind of system of always creating some kind of sample library uh, for every job that I did I just know I'm looking at this I just know this is going to inspire me I'm not going to have any blank screen fever or anything like that so this is a really exciting first step for the Inside Number 9 live show which is a week and a day away. Uh, I've got compositional ideas in my head, I've got this set of sounds, I've also got to collect some kind of stuff like generators and those kind of uh, music concrets, that kind of stuff, um, and then start building my, uh, my, my live rig and my failsafe. I am nervous though, believe you me. Right, so that's them all chopped up there, making all little loads of samples. Uh, so I'm just now going to go through and uh, tidy up and title. So uh, it's now Tuesday 1.30. I've just finished all of the sample prep for uh, this uh, live show. And uh, I basically took about a day longer than I expected. So I've got to go inside number nine live. So you can see here a whole bunch of different options. Very, very simple samples that I've done from the low C up in minor thirds just up here to g3 here so just really simple and then if we look here just some basic loops so if we have a listen effective. What I love about EXS is I, I just simply don't know a time that it's ever made my computer crash and I'm familiar with it. It's like a little kind of second language for me. So I want to be operating totally within an environment that I understand. Uh, so that if Reese, Steve or the director Babs want me to change anything, I can just get in there under the hood. I can't do that with contact, I'm ashamed to say. But the star of the show, don't save, is this slurred ricochet sound. I've simply added a bit of reverb to that and across the board. So basically you'll see that this one actually stops 
here. And that's basically because I just want that to be in the bass. And then I wanted a, a right hand accompaniment. So I've basically created a group featuring my triple felt, which is my Schimmel piano with three layers of felt on a mini harp, which is again me playing this small Celtic harp and then some samples, just some kind of incidental samples up here. So the net effect is we've got the piano and the harp. Along with the ricochets. So you'll notice that the compositions really aren't rocket science, but the way I see it, my responsibility to the producer and to Reese and Steve is to produce a functioning score as a head of department. So my feeling was, okay, I'm gonna keep the composition simple because I'm basically playing two sets of samples. So two different kinds of instruments, piano and harp right hand, strings left hand, they respond totally differently. I've got to hit my cues. I've got to hit my spots. I've got to kind of work out what I'm doing whilst being in a room full of people counting down different cameras and vision mixing etc etc and I've also got to be clear of dialogue so I've got to mix it live simply by using velocity the how heavily I'm playing stuff on the keyboard I don't know whether it's just me being a control freak but I just wanted to only use sounds that I made by hand so we've got the cellos uh, the piano the harp one exception to that is this little thump here which is actually from distorted reality old favourite from Spectrasonics, and we've got this sound, which is actually, it's a little tiny moment of Anna Phoebe, who's an amazing violinist, but she also plays an electric six-string violin, and I've linked her below if you haven't checked her out. She's amazing. She plays with Oliver Voy and Nitin Sawney, but she also has a great group of her own. I employed her to work on this thing called Severance, and there was just this moment where she made this sound, and I've never been able to replace it, so I'm resurrecting uh, just a moment from my old school Severance, just for, there's a moment where there's a head in a microwave in this show. Anna, I owe you a pint, if that's okay. So I just got back from the rehearsal, which was absolutely fascinating. It's amazing. It's like when you go to see an orchestra play, you're kind of in awe of that kind of technical ability. And it's no different from watching actors at work, being able to switch their characters on and off. Quite extraordinary. And there was this very funny moment where it's called corpsing, and that, and that word comes from when your character dies. The Stephanie Coles, fantastic British theatre actress, she corpsed and said, listen, I really don't understand what my motivation is. And she's turned to Steve and called him Reese. And Steve got really pissed off. And I was like, I didn't know Steve was kind of like that, really. And then suddenly realised, oh no, this is part of the, the whole thing. And it was so believable. Um, that they, they even fooled me. Basically, I've come back to the Dorset Square Hotel and I've just basically done a test run. This is the first time I've constructed my failsafe rig. So basically, I'm starting here with this uh, surge protected uh, power board. Um, so that's where I'm getting all the power from. And I've bought myself, I've been wanting to get a modern synth, in inverted commas, for a while. Um, I wanted a, a kind of a full-size key uh, MIDI controller, so this is kind of killing two birds with one rather over stone. So that then is going into out of MIDI. Didn't want to use USB, trust MIDI more, into this through box, which then splits it into two MIDI cables. And if we come here, it's going into this Kenton or M Audio uh, MIDI interface, which is then dongled into the computer. Also splitting this side, again, another computer and another M Audio thing, which is the MIDI there. And then basically I'm using, on both of these computers, the headphone outs. Uh, my rule is to cut out as many interfaces, possible conflicts, USB problems as humanly possible. I know that these headphone outs aren't brilliant out of the uh, Mac, but it, it's good enough for jazz. It's good enough for telly, it's gonna be lots of dialogue, that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to cut, cut down the number of devices that I was using. So that is then passing into this bespoke cable into uh, a breakout cable for my new, 
again, massively overspec for the job at hand, uh, Rupe Neve centerpiece. Um, and basically, if we look here, I'm going to use this new MacBook as my um, is my A computer because this one's been getting a bit kind of grumpy. Um, and what I'm going to do is basically at the moment all of my samples are on these drives. So I'm just going to run one computer for all of the technical rehearsals. And once I'm happy that we're kind of locked, I'm going to basically save the logic um, file. I'm only using EXS. Um, I'm going to save the logic file. Um, onto the desktop, including the samples and sample instruments. So again, I'm not relying on these. I think something that's really flawed with these uh, Macs are these USB-C um, holes, which after a while tend to get too wide, so you only need to kind of move a hard drive a little bit and they disconnect, and that, that will be a disaster. So everything's saved onto the desktop using the internal drive. So if we just have a look here, Basically, if I press, get it all in shot, if I press, you can see I'm generating two electric pianos, and if this unit fails or freezes, all I have to do is simply go like that, and that's my failsafe. Oop, it's like that. No, so it'll be that. And I've got my friend Kim, who's assisting me, and uh, we'll jump in if there's any kind of emergencies or disasters. But that's basically it. My final kind of piece of the puzzle was I went and sampled around the back of fridges, back of there's some buzzing step-down converters here, sampled all of those and created some kind of beds with those. My favorite is this thing called Buzzer. So this is for basically because it's a multi-layered show. The first collection of sounds here and with the, the cello are basically the, the real show, the kind of standard live multi-camera show. But then we go into this kind of hyper-reality and they didn't really want music that sounded like music. So I discussed, again, referring to some moments that I employed in Severance, the idea of using kind of generator sounds and compressor sounds to make, I guess, music concrete, that, that blurred line between something that is an atmosphere and something that is, is a tone. But being able to apply them to the piece, not like, you know, just firing in an atmosphere like a Grams op would, by actually being able to perform them in live to picture like a composer, I guess. Now, the reason for using Logic is twofold, because I wanted to use EXS and you can't get EXS in standalone. Again, Logic is something I'm very, very familiar with. And, you know, particularly with its mixing capabilities, you've seen that I've already kind of mixed these different sounds here. I've added some reverb, some delays, that kind of stuff. Again, it's just second nature to me. So they want me to do minute adjustments. Again, I'm just, I'm just basically doing my job that I do here, which is sit using EXS, using Logic, staring at the screen with the dialogue on jamming against it but I'll just be doing it live so that's basically the setup that I took to the studios so on our way into the studios Kim it was an interesting day yesterday wasn't it yeah yeah it's like a totally different world kind of multi-camera uh, TV as they call it so we're doing everything live uh, we're sat in the control room with the director, so we're really kind of at the hub of it, really getting to see how they do it. And it's fascinating because it's like a fabulously complicated environment um, with vision mixers and lighting rigs and a massive kind of mixing desk. And it's, it's interesting, it's like the, the role of a director is splayed across various different department heads who are all working in different rooms simultaneously. And the director is kind of tying all of these things in together. But the thing that I think we were both really surprised about is they're all freelancers. They just basically walk into this incredibly complex environment and kind of just make work it, it out. work. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> work it out. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, so we didn't get to play anything for anyone to hear yesterday, but I basically have got in my 
head now a sense of all of the different queues and how they're going to work and how they're going to work live. We had a few gremlins uh, yesterday which Kim fantastically ironed out where already one of the laptops didn't work properly so it's like for me it's justified that purchase um, and bringing the failsafe along. So um, What purchase me? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm being kind of quite um, subtle about my use of the camera because obviously there's lots of people at work they're not a kind of vlogging cam pointed at them but the more we get to know them the more I'll hopefully try and involve uh, you guys because it is a fascinating process. Wow, this looks terrifying. They've got the, they the stone little dungeon. Yeah, they've got this um, actual peat. Yeah, what's that? It's peat and it absolutely yeah, stinks. It. it smells like a kind of horse horse box. What makes this experience so unique is this is where I'll be working. The gallery, mission control. The centerpiece is a vision mixing board with all of the video feeds up on the wall. Through this glass is the sound apartment. Kevin will be sitting on a, a desk basically dubbing it live with a Grams Ops to his right firing in various different audio cues. I'm right over at the other end here. I've just basically been given a pair of channels, so a single stereo channel with full band with. So what I'll have to do in this hive of activity with people counting down different cameras to be cut to, stage directions, that kind of stuff, is balance the music against the dialogue live. But because I'll be playing with both hands, I'll basically be doing it with my fingers. I'll be controlling the balance of the music against dialogue using velocity. And through this glass here is the lighting department. They control all the lights remotely from their lighting console. Today is the day Day. Am I nervous? Well, of course I am, but I'm not crippled with it. I'm excited. I'm determined to enjoy myself tonight because what I'll be doing is unique, and I think it's unique to be unique even if it is for a fleeting half hour. It reminds me of the time I played the world's second biggest drum, and it's in a place in Amsterdam, and it's a big taiko drum, about the length of a double decker bus. Unbelievable. And as I was playing it, I said to the guys, where's the biggest drum in the world? And they said, Japan. And we worked out that it was about four o'clock in the morning. And surmised from that that I was probably the human being playing the biggest drum that was being played at that point on the planet. How does that tie in with what I'm doing tonight? Well, I'm pretty convinced that I'm going to be the only media composer on the planet who is scoring something live, solo, to broadcast to about three million, two to three million people is what's expected. It's niche, but as I say, it's unique to be unique on a planet with a population of this size. So it is an honourable position to be in. So I'm going to go and have a hearty breakfast, as hearty as I can make it, seeing as I'm still a vegetarian, and then uh, it's going to be just a day of rehearsals, and we're TX broadcast live tonight at 10 o'clock, BBC Two, two to three million people. 
So then, on the final day, I created a TX version of the Logic file. And basically what I did was rationalise all of the sounds that I didn't end up using, and I saved that as its own project with the sampler instruments inside. So you can see considerably less just to rationalise the whole thing. So if we load that up, you'll see we've just got a small number of sounds there. And I've also created an on-screen kind of, I'd guess it's a kind of aid memoir. So we've got our different cues here. They, they don't correspond to time at all. It's just this order here and what different sounds I'm activating. So I know with the first cue. <laughs> I know it's all of those instruments. Then I go for the second cue into something that's a little bit darker. Do a couple of those cues which to do with the phone ringing and then I reactivate the piano there. And for this bit is a nice transition where I'm going. And I also start with the whole show, actually, I saved it down after the show finished, but basically I started with the whole show boosted and there's a little aid memoir to pull it back 3 dB and then I pull it back up again there. Could have used automation, could have, you know, actually kind of slid this along as we moved along the show, but just didn't want to complicate matters. So that's basically it. And then as you can see, the show flips to this more music concrete stuff. And at the very end, I decided to apply this tremolo sound here. So we've got this buzzer sound, as you heard before, if I just do this. It's this scene where Reese is running around with a GoPro camera on his helmet and it's just to help with that hyper intensifying the emotion of the scene whilst it not necessarily being perceived as music but certainly being applied in a musical sense. It's not being applied as a true sound effect or a bit of sound design, it's actually something that I'm swelling against the picture, this, that and the other. And that's basically the show. So that's... Um the first full run through done, made a couple of mistakes and missed two cues, but we're all getting ready for... 30 seconds to on air, 30, thank you. Twenty seconds to on air, twenty. Stand by A. Stand by. Thank you. Fifteen to on air. Counting to on air in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Shot 1, three next. Stand by with the caption. Stand by with the caption, stand by Graham's radio ad. Go SFM. 24, three next. Stand by lighting change, stand by the sound cut. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, one, zero. So all in all, the experience was, I would have to say, probably a career highlight. Whilst the score I created wasn't anything out of the ordinary for me, uh, it, it was just great to condense all of the experience that I've you know, had over the years of scoring to picture, to be able to do it live, whilst also using sounds that I've created in you know, the many, many years of being a sample enthusiast. I'm so proud to be involved in something that has got just ridiculous reviews people saying it's the most extraordinary piece of television of the year and I'm really so honored to have worked alongside so many talented people and watched them ply their amazing trade not least of course to Steve Pemberton and Rhys Shearsmith so thanks to them and to the producers for allowing me to do this and see you next year with the rest of the next season if you'd like to have a go at these sounds I've given you a bit.ly link down below to basically that logic folder in it you'll see that there are sampler instruments they're all EXS based if any of you fancy turning them into contacts that'd be great and I can put the link down below so check maybe in a few days you never know someone may have helped us out I've also got a link down below to the full triple felt library which I discussed in a previous vlog linked above and below it's been a long one today so thanks if you've stayed the distance as always if you like what I do hit like if you haven't subscribed yet please do and if you want to be notified the next time I put a film up just hit the little bell icon. See you next time.